All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the O3 Dropcast. Uh, this is the podcast where we cover the offbeat, off-meta legends of the Armory. I am uh, one of your hosts today. My name is Craig, also known as Poop King. Uh, and here with me today, we have uh, Bryce. If you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Uh, that is me. I am Bryce. Uh, don't call me Bruce. Uh, only, only these gentlemen get to do that. Uh, I am a definite toaster owner uh and we're here to have some fun all right and then of course we have chris here hey everybody uh chris you may know me as smithle from uh twitter or other resources uh i can also confirm i am a toaster owner uh and i will probably call brace bruce about 100 percent of the time here uh i am as well a toaster owner though um <laughs> i i I, I like to like get up on my like little pedestal and just let you know that I also own an air fryer. So uh, you guys are still toasting bread. That's embarrassing. <laughs> get with the time. I don't know that we ever told you that story, hey, but hey, we'll, we'll we'll cover it. Hey, I, I've, I've I totally I, lost on me. Yeah, I, I just invested in a bread maker, so I can make my own bread and then toast it. I'm pretty sure that's just yeast. Anyway, uh, <laughs> why don't we uh, why don't we cover a little bit more about who we are? Um, uh, by sort of talking about what our favorite decks are, maybe your favorite meta hero and your favorite uh, not so meta hero. Um, you know, I personally play Katsu. I know it's not the most meta relevant hero, but it's definitely the one that I'm most comfortable bringing to a tournament. But god damn, I have fun playing a a library vestige of soul Bolton that is not good. But one oh of god. these days. One of these days, a top player is going to be like, so I was, you know, I was net decking as I always do. And I came along this little deck by Poop King. Uh, <laughs> the and, Poop King. Yeah. And it, uh, the, but by royal decree, I declare uh, Bolton uh, no longer runs Lumina. <laughs> and <laughs> that's what I want. I want Bolton to, to not play lumina and uh just i want to find that new some new spice for bolton uh that deck is bad but i love playing it um i, I would say if anybody no. slapped like library down across from me and they were playing bolton immediately my mind would be blown like it would Judge. be the oh, best yeah. moment of, my, of the event. <laughs> you know what would be so great to play a Bolton that plays library and immediately have two yellows in hand and mm -hmm. just be like, it's gone. <laughs> yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> you spent two hundred dollars on that. It's in the trash. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, Chris. I know that you um, have a uh, have a deck that's really near to your heart. Yes. Uh, so, so if we're if we're talking like. So, I mean, for me personally, I, I always am drawn to like the trashy heroes. Uh, I think they're kind of the most fun. Uh, for me, I just get a little bit tired of playing the best deck over and over and over again, uh, which is kind of why I like this podcast, because we kind of talk a little bit about everything. But if, if we're talking about like what's my best deck to play that's good, it's always going to be Dory. You know, I'm, I'm a, a warrior man, you know, through and through. But recently, my my pet deck, so to speak, has been what I've been calling Trash Olympia. Uh, the goal of the deck is always just to get one win at any event, and I don't care if it's a bye-bye at the end or whatever, uh, but it is just straight block with three cards out of hand, swing Decimator, and hopefully you just slowly tick them down to the point that they're just like, I hate this, I gotta block with everything because now I'm coming in for seven, seven, <laughs> seven, seven. Um, it, it, it's, what's that, uh, the one saying it's like 60% of the time it works every time. It works. It's very yeah. much that type of deck. Well, uh, you, won, you won a skirmish with the Decimator uh, Great Axe Dory, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, so, yeah, so De mean... yeah, Decimator Dory in, in Blitz is is a lot of fun and very, very good. Uh, you know, I, I plan on probably playing that a lot more uh, in the Blitz world, but in, in CC when they have like sideboard options and a lot more health, Decimator can fall a little bit short especially when you're playing it on olympia it's it's i always tell people they're like what's olympia doing i'm like don't worry about it we're not going to even go there i'm not going to wager <laughs> once this entire match we're perfectly fine 
that makes me want to say just real quick uh shout out to the person on talishar who recently popped nine gold against me in one turn <laughs> and still didn't do any damage wow <laughs> what did they do just keep cycling their hand or... <laughs> i don't know what they were doing <laughs> uh, but i i don't even remember what i was playing but i remember just being like oh that's not gonna cut it <laughs> <laughs> gross gross yeah. But yeah, so so Olympia the Trash Man is is definitely uh, my my current pet deck. All right, Bryce, what are you bringing to uh, what are you bringing to competitive tournaments, and what are you uh, what are you sitting on on Talishar that doesn't see the light of day? I mean, are we are we allowed to say that Axe's Dory is meta now? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I okay. think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I am. I am also a bit of a warrior simp. Um, been playing Kasai in 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 Blitz for a while. Um, you know, well, not anymore. Uh, obviously, Kasai and CC now. Um, I think one of the one of the just most weird, you know, probably not meta decks. Uh, I had a lot of fun with a very um, red line Riptide in Blitz. That was a lot of just like um, like Rav Rabs, Snatch, all that kind of stuff, and then throwing in uh, the traps and you know with that. And it was just like it was it was weird it was it was very like not it played significantly less arrows than you would think any ranger would and it was a lot of you know cheap go agains finish with an arrow um but then it still you know had some of those had some of those uh uh why am i blanking on the card now remorseless mm -hmm. um hanging out in there just like just because you know nobody expects it um when well it's not that nobody expects remor rem remorseless in rangers it's just nobody expects it when your turn before was like rav 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 snatch yeah and also, then it's like it, what it's so hard for me to believe that remorseless isn't an azalea specialization every time i see it, it anywhere be, right? else, i'm yeah. like that's not a card you can play yeah that's for azalea she's on it um, <laughs> uh if the but... heroes on the art it better be a, a spec for them i, I think just, we should it just makes sense submit that to james white as a role be like look we're, we're making yep. a change uh only azalea <laughs> i honestly i'm still mad that uh big bertha wasn't a playable hero uh in uh bright lights that's i forget uh, big bertha i'm just mad that we don't got betsy's big log that she has in her uh her hero art that's Never like, say Betsy's yeah. big log again, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Let's let's start moving into the uh, great sec, great the show sec. a little bit here. Um, uh, I, I want to first start off. Uh, I know that neither of you made it to our local Tuesday Armory. Did you guys get any fabbing? Are you fabbing? So so yeah, I've been I've been, been up I, I've been playing a lot of Talishar. Like I said, I've I've had what we call the Feeny flu uh, right now. So there's somebody at our LGS. His name is Matt Feeny. Uh, he had a real nasty cough uh, whenever we were playing it. Uh, we were doing a uh, an arcane kind of draft. Uh, it's like a circuit. It's hard to describe. Uh, but we were having an event for that on Sunday, and he had a little bit of a cough. And, of course, I felt a little sick. So I kept saying I have the Feeny flu. But I've been playing a lot of Talishar. And it's, it's funny, Brace, that you mentioned Riptide. Because I've been playing a ton of Riptide uh, on Talishar. Uh, Why? Because I, I hate myself. Just, just for the fun of it, or okay? That's <laughs> yeah, no, fair. no. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's again. I think it's a lot of fun. I have a deck that I've been kind of building and playing for him. Uh, it, it's not great. It's slowly starting to get there. It, it's very dreadbore focused. Uh, you know, it doesn't even run Death Dealer or anything like that. But yeah, but, say uh, about standing order in that deck. Have you uh, got any chance to play I, a standing order? I haven't tested it yet. I, I don't know if it's going to be the right call. I mean. So standing order, I mean, it, it it's very much a, a unique card in that it does what Riptide can kind of just do naturally anyway. I mean, so basically it reads, when this attacks or defend, you may put a card from your arsenal top or bottom of your deck. If you do, it gets plus two or plus two. So it's a zero cost, four for three, which is just generally good, even if you play it. But I, I've been tempted to put it in Riptide just for options whenever i don't want to use my chest to get rid of the arsenal uh but more or less to sit there and say okay look maybe i you know play it out of arsenal because i don't have another great card or sorry um maybe i play it out of hand let's say i Thank do you. something like an like an e-strike or something like that uh and then i have this left in hand and i sit there and go okay 
if I play this and I have a trap or I have a card in Arsenal that doesn't get much value against my opponent, maybe it's like one of my, you know, tar pit traps or something like that against a Brava that's coming in once. Maybe I can find a use for that instead of just trying to get a resource and sinking it out or whatever. Uh, and then having a direct late in game whenever I need it. So I, I don't know if it's good by any means, but it, it's something that I'm definitely considering as a more Arsenal management kind of option. What's what's yeah. unfortunate is that uh, the Riptide trigger will happen before the Standing Order one. Yep. Um, because what 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 would make it great is to be able to sink your arsenal and then have Riptide resolve to mm -hmm. put something. Uh, unfortunately, it's not how that works. I find that that card uh, was the one I was maybe most excited for for heavy hitters and have found absolutely no use for it as. Uh, Azalea moved out of the meta, and I didn't really, as Katsu, need it for the um, Dromai or Prism. I think mm -hmm. there's a like clear value in that it can be a popper, mm -hmm. um, but they tend to always, at least Prism, they they all know when they're when they want to, you know, tutor for their um, Herald of Triumph or Figment of Triumph. Um, so then you've just lost your arsenal and you're blocking five which is fine but it's not the popper you want it and against someone like azalea you have to assume if they're coming in for five dominate you don't even have to assume this is just how it is they didn't pump it at mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. um so that's yeah i i was really excited it sat it's it's sitting in my trade binder right now yeah another another hero i'm kind of considering it for would be arachne you know with him being kind of like more slow fatigue kind of mill them out kind of deck uh, I was almost thinking of it just as a potential C and C saver. Uh, so instead of sitting there saying, okay, look, I'm going to get rid of two cards in hand, you know, to stop the C and C from getting rid of like a, you know, leave no witness or whatever I have in my arsenal. I could then sit there and say, okay, I'm going to save that for like later in the game, whenever I want it anyway, and then still block five off of it. Uh, take one damage from a C and C and, you know, lose no arsenal. You know, I, to it's, me, that's okay. It's a lot better than than the alternative and yeah. that's 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 exactly where i was kind of going with it is is yeah i mean if you are okay to take the one if you're okay to leak one damage if you got if you got the health if, if it's available sink your arsenal only take one damage from the c and c still have a three card hand yeah there um, is another hero that i think um likes to block and hates their arsenal and that's vincent um <laughs> so i could see i could see it getting some play in vincent um but i don't want to i don't want to get too stuck on this card right now i want to hear uh bryce what um what you got up to this week you said you played monday i know i know you're into star wars unlimited so did you get yeah. blood in as well or was it just yeah so the thing that chris was talking about um on sunday uh just to give a little context around that maybe you know uh maybe pitch some for for green tree uh, i think you know most of our locals know about this but anyone else um, who might be listening, um, the, you know, the continued support that we've gotten from, from John at Green Tree for doing these just like really awesome events. Um, it's a, it's a arcane first edition draft, uh, circuit. So once a month we're having a, a tournament, um, of a like rotating format. So we've already had a, a commoner, we had a WTR draft, and then there's going to be, um, uh, crack shuffle play bright lights, CC, uh, probably just a normal sealed event. I can't remember what the yeah. other one was, there, but there's, there's um, sealed. There's going to be, I think, theme deck. So like the Blitz Precon deck, yeah, yeah, things like Blitz, that. So Blitz Precon. Yeah, and but it's who... not only that the first place. So if first place wins, you get invited to the um, first edition Alpha, arcane draft. First edition Al 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 arcane draft. Yep. But also, there are cash prizes. Yep. I mean, there's that's... a lot of lot of lot of value in cash prizes and that arcane first draft uh, first bleh, arcane first edition draft getting thrown around um and we're just kind of once a month doing one of these circuit events and this weekend was the wtr draft um i went to one in both of the pods so we did we did six rounds uh redraft after the third round and then cut to top eight um i am a notoriously really bad drafter i just like i don't know i'm completely deaf to like any of the, the sending signals and stuff like that um i was frankly kind of proud of myself for making top eight in that one and then 
man did i just punt that top eight draft it was it was a nightmare it was also very very weird packs getting sent around i was i was trying really hard to go into ninja um i went uh dory bravo uh dory first draft bravo second draft i was i was it looked like ninja was very open and then i realized i was getting nothing but finishers um i wasn't getting any of just like the chain starters you know everything was like was all the all the combo pieces that everyone was taking the starters for him so um i had to make a very unfortunate late pivot and just had the just just the worst deck i can possibly imagine um my headset is blaring a beeping thing in my ear right now and i do not know what's going on with it <laughs> uh, i'm gonna go ahead and restart my headset while uh maybe there's Wait, some other it- talking going on so, yeah, I'd um, love to uh, get into uh, some of the stuff that I got up to because I, I was there while you guys were doing uh, your uh, top eight draft and I was watching the Pro Tour. Mm-hmm. Uh, we can get into that in a little bit because I know that's a big topic right now. But this week for myself, other than watching the Pro Tour, I went to our uh, pre-con night. Our, yeah. uh, I think we do that monthly now. Yeah, how, um, how'd, how'd that go? I mean, what, what pre-con did you get? Because I've only played with the Warrior so, one, so I haven't had much exposure to the other ones so i brought two new players i brought my girlfriend and i brought their best friend you don't know my girlfriend she goes to a different armory um (laughs) but uh she goes to an armory in canada (laughs) um she got betsy Mm uh their friend got reinar and i got betsy okay so it it was cool in that my girlfriend and I both got the same hero, I was like, okay, this will be good. But round one, they get paired into each other. Uh, uh, Dima, who's my girlfriend. Ne- oh, perfect. <laughs> uh, Dima's never, or Dima's played one game before, and Jesse has never played. Like, that's I what I was going to ask you is like what their experience level with the game was to come in. And like, it seems like, it seems like pre-cons and like the theme deck is like a perfect place for mm-hmm. somebody to, to play their first armory. So like timing and works this out. Is, this is, um, I would say like a testament to uh, what a local game store does that is beyond cell packs because Michael Cho, one of the local guys at Green Tree, stood by their table and talked them through everything. Obviously they went to time, uh, <laughs> but they, they learned the game while I was able to play my own game. Cause I felt bad. Originally I told uh, uh, Graham who I was paired into, I was like, all right, well, I'm just gonna, this will just be a buy for you. I'll just drop. Cause they need, I can't, I, I brought them here. I can't just be like, all right, figure it out. Um, but so they had fun. Um, I had a good time. The quality of those pre-cons is so good. It's like if you could draft the best version of that deck without any Majestic. If you just got every card you needed to draft it, uh, it it, it was a really fun deck. Um, My third game, I played Dima because I drew my first game. So did she. Uh, the second game, I guess I won, and her opponent conceded to her. Um, and then we got paired into each other. So I had a Betsy Mirror against my girlfriend who had played three games of Flesh and Blood before. And when I tell you she whooped my ass, yes. like, nice. without nice. any, <laughs> yes. like, nice. I, I, like, it was just like every turn she was like, mm, wait, I, uh, I think... Uh, Oh, I can pay for Betsy overpower. And it was just like, oh, what the? stop. Um, so she she got me and I I, I did not pull punches. Um it uh it was not as close as of a game as I would have liked. Well, but it was it, still it, it sounds like she sharked you, bro. Like it sounds like she knew exactly what she was doing and just played it dumb for the first half of the armory. Dude, that would be really upsetting if she was real. Uh, <laughs> now, now here's a question do, do you think that she enjoyed it enough to come back because i mean that's one thing that we hear a lot of times with flesh and blood is that it is hard to get into the game especially as a casual player uh compared to like something like magic or pokemon or something like that do you think that that was enough for her to be like you know what i had a, a good enough time i'm willing to go back and, and check out another one a really great girlfriend who will go to an armory uh 
to to uh, feel connected to me. And That's awesome. <laughs> if if it wasn't for our relationship, she would have no interest in flesh and blood. It's not for her. She, sure. but Jesse, we we may have got Jesse. We may we may have, we may have got Jesse. Um, Part of the crew. Part they were of the crew. They, they liked Reinar. Oh, they really Reinar, and uh, you know, we're you know they're like asking you know what what kind of pack should I open? And we're like, well, you know. We're gonna give you history pack because that's where you get stuff. And uh, they pulled a um, Brave Forge bracers, and so we were all like, "Let's go!" Yeah, nice. yeah! <laughs> you know, just getting super excited. There, um, there's something about new player luck. I swear to God, every new player that I've seen, like week one, come they pull like a legendary and go, "Oh, the drop point's like really good in this game or something." Like, <laughs> I, I've opened like four, I think, in two years. Like, I, I buy most of my legendaries because I have the worst luck. Well, That's I'll, just say, pack, I'll tell you this to just like talk about a little bit about what the flesh and blood community is in my mind and what I hope it is, uh, you know, across the country. Jesse and Dima were the only two uh, new players there that night. There are six pre-cons. There are six heroes in heavy hitters. They each left with like seven decks. Yeah. You know, they, they, <laughs> they yeah. had... Jesse had every hero. They had all the bulk that no one wanted. And then they cracked their entry packs, got an L. So it was a great, it was a great introduction for them. And I'm very excited because I think it's the perfect time to get in because we have hype. We've got hype. It's here. Um, I, I am all aboard the hype train for uh, Part the Mist Veil. Vale. Yep. I have been... Uh, I started my year off by making a Google Doc for a video I would make of everything I want from uh, the ninja set that would be coming this year. Because I was just like, it's coming. It is going to come. Yep. And uh, I am uh, thrilled with what we see so far. Um, so I want to start uh, the conversation off with... Um, well, first of all, did you guys see the release video? How did the news come to you? Did you was so, it spoilers on the Discord channel? The Discord bot, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Discord so, bot shows me stuff before I see it anywhere else. It's just yeah. I, I mean, I mean, I gotta say though, like the, these, I swear, every set, these release videos that they do are just getting better and better and better. I mean, voice it, acting's getting better too. Yeah, I mean, it is. It was so good this one. Like, and, and this was a set like going into like I know that Craig. Song? Yeah, like like. Like, I know, Craig, you were excited because, like, you're like, oh, okay, I'm Mr. Ninja all day, every day, things like that. Me, I was like, eh, I don't know if I'm as excited for this set. Like, we knew that there was going to be an illusionist. Like, uh, you know, we assumed probably an assassin or, or ninja or something like that. Uh, but I, I wasn't super hyped for it. And then whenever they showed new and I'm reading the ability and I'm like, oh, my God. I was like, this looks like it's going to be so much fun. And like it completely shifted my mindset on it between the video and the hero and everything like that. It was just, it, it was something else. I mean, I don't know if I'm buying a case for it because I really don't care about the illusionist and the ninja stuff, but I'm, I'm day one buying every assassin thing I can get. Okay. So I started seething a little bit there when you said that you weren't uh, interested in the illusionist. Um, <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, can you pull up the picture for fractal replication for me? I can indeed. So uh, fractal replication is uh, I expect that and spectral she uh, the spectral procession before we. So aside aside from it being a card that I think has some potential with the set, I I have a I have a very serious question for you, Jimmy Blanco. Why is this not a Mira? I don't know who this is. It's not a Mira. I wanted a Mira. That's it. No, <laughs> I have a different take on that. Everyone was talking about a Mira. I'm cool with waiting for that like i don't need all the like heavy lore heroes like right yeah yeah i'm it's... happy that this is not something that was like you know we got victor last set victor was around um I i'm happy that enigma caught me by surprise yeah. yeah 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 i mean we are we we already have we have you know blue illusionist red illusionist yellow illusionist so i don't know like where they go next with with you know, future potential illusionists. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I am the... still, I am still holding on hope that Amira is going to be a playable character at some point, because just like 
every card she's in has been some of my just like favorite art oh, from the, the illusionist the class. art's like, gorgeous I, I paid yager what you know some stupid amount for that fractal replication <laughs> play mat because i'm not you know a rudy patron or whatever but mm -hmm. i just i'm 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 coping i'm holding out hope that we're going to get her eventually uh, while we're talking about illusionist cards i want to uh highlight uh we'll call this little section poopy's picks um <laughs> this is a card that i have uh so so here on the o3 drop cast you know we love all players of flesh and blood whether you know <laughs> whether you're brody spurlock or you're me uh and i have always been like really heavy in this card i'm like this card is gas it's so good and i know a lot of prism players who were like nah that's it sucks so many people when it came out in the bright lights expansion impact were hating on it because it has ward one and phantasm all of those people had to read the card again when I responded to eight spectral shields on the stack getting popped, because that is an instant for zero. And you just pop that down as they've popped your entire board and you're like, all right, I, you know, if you're, if you're running um, reality refractor in uh, Enigma. I also and, don't think you and, said where the card is, uh, Craig. <laughs> Phantom Tide Maw? Oh, go. it, uh... <laughs> you, you, you were all in on it. You're like, oh, I was like... Everybody knew. Everybody card. knew what you were talking about. Everybody though. knew. <laughs> Everybody knew. Um, yeah, I, th this is a card that uh, our friend Jeff texted me and said that he, he had to admit that uh, he was wrong uh, and he should have bought in before it was $12. Um, and so really, Poopy's Picks is just uh, my vindictive way of saying I told you so um, <laughs> and immortalizing that in podcast format. <laughs> but it gets a counter for Document. every uh, every like aura that pops. Um, every illusionist card, yeah. Every illusionist card. So spectral shields, okay, so it won't have the, the merciful retribution fun where like you pop a courage or a ponder mm -hmm. and you're dealing damage that's one of my favorite interactions i love, I love merciful retribution such so. a fun card but this card is is so much fun like I, like i've said uh reality refractor in enigma your first weapon's gonna cost one resource so you could dump your hand play that and then throw a huge attack with a tunic counter mm -hmm. um so I I really like that card. Um, that gets uh, that gets my pick. Uh, let's say it goes from poopy to good. <laughs> poopy to Scoopy. Yeah, yeah. It's a Scoopy. Poopy to Scoopy. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. Scoop it up. No goopy. No goop. Um, no goop on our cards. <laughs> there is another hero we've yet to talk about, uh, which is obviously Zen. Mm -hmm. um, this is our ninja hero, our crouching tiger hero. And um, I love ninjas. I am a huge Katsu hero, so, or, you know, main. So I'm really excited by the fact that Combo is returning. Mm -hmm. um, now, there is a question is, do we get any Combo cards that aren't Mystic? And I think that the answer, yes, we yeah. do. They're, cr they're Crouching Tiger cards. But there is one line that I think would fit really well here, okay. and it's Leg Tech. Leg tap hasn't seen. Leg tap does not have a second path. It just goes leg tap, rising knee, and then there's a path from that that can either be blackout kick mm -hmm. or I think it's hurricane technique. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, uh, it is catered to Katsu in that rising knee thrust has a zero cost. Leg tap is in a position right now where it should have leg tap for one, follow up for one finisher for one yep. based off this being a blue set i think that would be what, a lot of fun what would you want the finisher like the line to end with like if you're sitting there saying hey i can make a card that kind of follows up with this that would justify the one cost and all that kind of stuff would there be anything that you're looking at again i i don't play ninja so mm -hmm. to me i don't understand you know why wouldn't i play leg tap or something like that like wh what would it be missing that you would say this now has a place in my deck over another one of the combo lines. 
So the reason, first of all, I think the reason you don't play leg tap is twofold. Um, I, I don't know what the block values are. I don't actually know what the attack values are, but I do know what the costs are. Um, so it, it blocks for two and the red comes in for four. Is that mm -hmm. what you're saying, Bryce? Yep. Um, so the, the reason I don't play leg tap is as Katsu, I don't want to pay for a starter unless it's surging strike. Sure. If it doesn't come in uh, at like a full bonds turn level, I don't really want to pay for a starter. Sometimes I'll do a spinning wheel kick, but that's just because it's a four and has <laughs> natural go again and, and it has combo. Um, so spinning wheel is fine, but it also has the problem of the only other piece in the line that has a zero cost is the rising knee thrust mm -hmm. so your blackout kick can't be discarded if you don't need it your leg tap can't be discarded if you don't need it um other lines have this problem too but right now um the problem with leg tap also comes in that it's just uh power i think it's just increasingly stronger and there are other ways to do that things like um flying kick sure you know um there have been other ways to get, you know, a seven attack without having to jump through as many hoops. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think there are opportunities for them to visit some of the combo lines that didn't get any love in Outsiders. Okay. I I also will confidently say we will not get any surging strike support uh, this set. We do not need it. But but do we get a reprint? Do you think it still shows up in it? No. Okay. No, we. we... <coughs> We've had two surging strikes. I mean, you're not wrong. You're <laughs> yeah. not wrong. It's just, it seems like such a bread and butter kind of ninja How about card. Kadachis? I don't think Kadachis would be there. I don't, I don't think we're going to see Kadachis as weapons. I mean, I, I think we're getting something new. I mean, I think it's going to still be one-handed. But, it, you know, I want to see it be more of like, a, a, and I apologize, my, my anime knowledge is going to fail me here. But what are those, like, Little knives that like have like the circle at the end and they throw them. Talking about a sh like a shuriken? Yeah, something like that. But like I thought those were like throwing stars or yeah, whatever. The... Yeah, like, like, like oh, the yeah, little throwing yeah, knife yeah. looking things. Yeah, like whatever. But the Naruto knives. Yeah, the Nar Yeah, exactly. The Naruto knives. Oh, oh. Yeah, I I know what you're talking about, but um, because there's a uh a Counter Strike knife that is of that style, but I I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't remember the name of it though. That's what I think we get. I think we. Get, I want. I think we get. Well, we look get at those. his art. Look at his art. What if it's, you know, he's literally holding like a two hand staff. D did we yeah. not just talk the Betsy log problem? <laughs> uh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. He has a log. She doesn't use it. But I will say um, one of the things that I was thinking about uh, recently is that Flick Knives is a ninja card mm -hmm. as well as an assassin card. So I would love this set to have uh, daggers that are either mm -hmm. for both mm -hmm. classes or for one class. But have a relevant on hit um, because Kadachi's on hit is take one. Do you? That's the that's the on hit. Do you um, think that hit the <laughs> on hit or something like that for the knives could be something like generate a chi? So so that's what yeah. that's I think like that was where I was going to go next. Is that I love talking about this. I love speculating on this kind of stuff. And there's nothing wrong with just having fun and speculating and saying like, oh, wouldn't it be cool if 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 ABC happened? But no one knows how no. chi is going to work yet. Yeah. And and yeah. I think a lot of these hero abilities, like I'm sure we'll move on to yeah. new eventually, but like a lot of the strength of these heroes, I think depends on how easy it is to make chi. Yeah. Well, like, are are we expecting to have three every turn? Yeah. Probably not. I, I I don't think so. And I think the part that's interesting too is uh, what's it called? Brian Gotham on uh, Twitter said nobody that he's seen has been right or close yet. So. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it, it's one of those things that I'm really curious as to how it comes. Because I, I think you're right. I think if this is something that I can do every turn, a lot of these heroes, it, Broken. It, it's going to be real yeah. overpowered. Uh, or if you do it every turn, you're going to put yourself into like a late game detriment or something like that right. kind of situation. So it may be available well, to you, you but, but how do you do it is different. What What is your speculation? Like, do you have a speculation on how you think uh, we're going to be generating chi with these heroes? So, so mine, and, and I, I forget who said it in the Green Tree Discord, but I, I, it made a lot of sense, was something like Banish from Pitch uh, may generate me. it. Yeah, mm -hmm. did you? I, I think that makes a lot of sense. I also think chi is going to be something that, you know, my, my very wild card out there is going to be something that you create that stays on the field kind of like a gold or a silver token that you can create mm. a certain amount okay. 
but you don't have to use it right then and there. So it could oh, be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so something that, like you can kind of sit there and say, I'm building this up over two or three turns. Now I'm going to cash it in. Yeah, yeah, like like you said, like a gold or a copper, you know. Uh, energy token from ma- or energy resource from Magic the Gathering is <laughs> yeah, yeah. sort of like my, that's honestly my fear is like if you just pl- when you play a card it generates. Yeah. Like I I hope it just doesn't say on a card make a chi. Mm-hmm. I I I, I I think well, that would so, be too restrictive. So mm-hmm. so here's here's the thing though. I think um I think uh, me and Feeny were talking about this, but like because there is a unique blue resource icon for it mm-hmm. i think we were kind of talking about the potential where like some cards just pitch for chi instead of pitching for energy so if yeah. your card has like if your card has the blue resource symbols in the top right um it can be pitched for chi or regular energy but regular cards can't be pitched for you know what i mean like yeah. it like the see, blue could count as either kind of see i the thing i'm like i could see that but i'm hoping it's not the case because the one thing I think I love about Flesh and Blood is that you're never resource starved. Like you, you're never man, like land screwed or mana screwed or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Like you're in Magic, you can and, have nice hands, but yeah. And, and so it's like let, let's play. Say I'm playing Zen or something like that, and I just draw an all red hand, and everything that's in that hand needs chi. You know what I mean? Or does it open the door to the next set? Now we get the yellow resource, and then the purple resource, and then a black resource, like. To me, it's like I want every well, card to still be mana. playable. Yeah. <laughs> now you're just using mana, and not yeah. your magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, I'm like, I want every card to still be playable. Like, I like maybe there's a card that says, "Hey, when pitched, it could generate it." Like, you could choose to make it generate chi instead. Uh, that may be okay, uh, but I, I still think resource needs to be resource. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, we could speculate on it. We gotta wait. Uh, yeah. You know, when w- when is uh, for anyone who doesn't know, when is actual like spoiler season for the set starting? I mean, so, we're, we're getting pretty tomorrow close. Tomorrow right? we're getting, we're get, I believe tomorrow we start getting our um, expansion slot stuff. Okay, but mm-hmm. the actual spoiler tomorrow season tomorrow think... being March 29th, because yes. we don't know exactly when this episode is going to go out. But it is, it is we also don't day. know. We don't know for a fact that tomorrow will come. That's. <laughs> I, I mean. And that is the burden we all live with. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, but so, so, is a gift. Uh, so that's why they call it the present. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so, so Zen, I know you're you're excited for that, Craig. Uh, is it safe to say you're most excited, Bryce, then for Enig- like Enigma? Absolutely. Uh, so, so for one, I think the uh, the young Marvel is some of the just oh, hands down most gorgeous art that i've ever seen in fab i mean there's a, a ton of great art in this game but like I, I i'm more impressed with like the young version than the adult version when it comes to just like the art um it, the, the, like, uh, yeah. the pastel watery color kind of look it is yeah. it's gorgeous that's and, I, and I had, oh i was gonna say i had uh some friends who play magic uh good friends of mine they haven't gotten into fab yet and i forgive them for it but they were saying they don't like uh, Flesh and Blood's art. They feel like it's too like AI generated, which is hilariously ironic. Because you... <laughs> the MTG just got called out for AI generated. I, I, yeah, but it was but... like it was like day after like I saw this Enigma Marvel, and I was like, "This is the most beautiful card." Yeah, it's wild. It's so yeah. gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, but yeah, yeah, Enigma because uh, uh, what was the uh, the the illusionist common gloves from Uprising? Oh, um, um, that had a lot of blue waiver. and, and... Yeah, the, you talk about wave of reality. Yes, uh, uh, that yeah, card. That one? card in cold foil, like uh, the blues and okay. stuff on that card, pops so freaking well. And I, I'm I'm positive that that art for Enigma is going to look just like that. Really vibrant yeah. blues popping in cold foil. Um, but you know, art art aside. Um, yeah, like kind of to circle back on what, what you what you were talking about with like your thoughts on on Enigma and stuff. Um, yeah, Reality Refractor. Um, it really feels like she might be a very very like even more defense. I don't know about even more defensive than Prism, but like uh, stack up shields, block out, and 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 then Nothos, right? Mm-hmm. Like just kind of block out and swing a Spectral Shield for six. Yeah, it's um, probably it'll it'll be uh, not reality refractor most likely it'll be iris of reality. Iris, that's, that's okay. That yeah, again, but that's fair. yeah, it's a small difference. Yeah, and that's I, I was kind of thinking that like I wonder if this is just going to be like the official 
Iris Stromai, right? The way everybody was kind of playing that, like this is like actually that. Um, so. But either way, it's going to be great. I'm I'm super excited. I the the last three sets have all just like got me. Like yeah. Kasai coming back. I bought three freaking cases of heavy hitters. Um, big shout out to the uh, um, not TCG player who 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 had the Team who Covenant? had the no who had the Centauri Cell Sword promos. Uh, TCG. SCG. Yeah, my my SCG case had young and adult Kasai marbles in it, and it was the one that came with the Cell Sword promo. So that's a good uh, case. Yeah, I'm buying from them again. Yay. Uh, but yeah, probably it's going to be, a, yeah, I'm buying a lot of product for this next set Ooh. anyway. Um, so, uh, before we get into too much illusionist talk, because we do have an illusionist we have to talk about, uh, let's quickly talk about new. Um, and I just want to say, I love new already. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, <laughs> it is, death it is not a great, it's probably going to be a tough matchup for Katsu. We've talked about this a little in like some of our local discords. Mm -hmm. It's like we Katsu loves to be able to block early, just get, you know, bonds of ancestry fodder in his graveyard. But what I'm really excited about is the tears of guardian players. <laughs> <laughs> it is so real. So real. And so happy that they're going to have a bad time. <laughs> and if you're out there and you're a guardian player, just let me tell you, um, I meant what I just said. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I'll say it again. Can our can yeah. our first podcast merch be a uh, a mug that just says "Tears of Guardian Players"? <laughs> yes, please. On it. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. Now, new new. I'm I'm hyper excited. Like like, like the day one. Like so. Okay, I saw the art and like like we were talking about the video before, and I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome. And then I like it, again being somebody that likes assassin as a class. Uh, you know, whenever I saw this, I was like, oh my God, like this just looks like such a fun mechanic. Now, everybody's sitting there saying she's going to be so broken. She's going to be so broken. Da, 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 da. The one thing I think a lot of people forget, most of the stealth cards, if I think bad. there's only one, they're bad. They don't have go again. You know what I mean? So it, it's basically saying, you know, hey, you know, uh, tax with stealth get when this chain link resolves, banish all action cards defending this. Unless you're finding a way to give go again, you're, you're yeah. really maybe going one chain link deep trying to go in with attack reactions or something over top. Now, what I've kind of speculated is, does this mean that we see things such as, you know, yellow razor reflex making a, like a comeback into decks? Things like that that are giving me an on-hit opportunity that also gives go again. You, you know, because mm -hmm. j just the stealth alone, they're, they're what, zero cost threes? You know what I mean? Most cases. It's yeah. it's not great. It's not like the contract stuff. But if I have a way to give go again, or I have a way to kind of start going multiple chain links deep, like you know, we had what uh, the uh, the new Arachne that had it, but his first stealth got go. But again. it was it was their hero ability that gave it to him because even the reactions don't do it. Nope. The, the stealth reactions mm, yep, don't do it. Yep. it. Just bump by like three. So I, I was having a, this conversation uh, with some you know people were really worried about this hero and whatever and they're like you know mm -hmm. this is a great fatigue hero and someone else was like no it's the damage is going to be great and i was like it, in my mind this is it's almost like, this is it's almost... like six with an on hit you know yeah, you it, will have or that's what it was they were saying just don't block and it was like yeah but they do have on hits yeah the, the, most of the on hits in the stealth are still pretty good like i mean the the way that i'm kind of viewing this hero in my head is very similar to kind of how some people play Dory in that you're going to do something like a sharpened steel and then an attack and then an attack reaction to get like your full value. I think that there's going to be a lot of non-attack actions that are coming out in this set to support new where people are going to want to block, you know, whether it be through an mm -hmm. on hit, it's going to be raw damage, whatever the case may be, you know, if, if she's suddenly coming in with something that's like a, you know, a six damage or seven damage stealth attack, threatening of blood rot pox, and holding back a, you know, potential attack reaction in hand to go over, people are going to start saying, do I, do I give one card? Do I give two cards? You know, do I overblock, get bad value that way? I'm hoping that's how she plays out, like that very mind game-esque, because it also kind of plays into her lore of basically being like somebody that seduces people in and then kills them. It's basically like, I want to seduce your hand from you. Give me the cards to block the bad value. And then either I let you make the bad block or I still come in over the top. So it's kind of a damned you if you do, damned if you don't kind of mentality. 
that's uh, assassins in general right like a lot of as in, well a lot of the couple that we have yeah um yeah same same theory so, i'll yeah. also say assassin players often tell me that one of the things that drew them to it is they were uh demir players in magic the gathering <laughs> and this is the most demir hero we've seen Fair. being able to play other people's cards um that is a great feeling um let's talk about some cards people won't be able to play again or at least uh shortly uh they won't be able to uh as dromai is uh four points away from living legend um let's uh let's keep this one probably pretty brief because i can't imagine there's much that people haven't already said about the topic um personally i um we know that dromai will come back um i don't think uh I, I I don't think uh, her next treatment will be as rocky as the rollout of the new prism, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I'm I'm ex I'm excited for just the meta to switch up a bit. I think the winner in my book is uh, probably going to be Azalea. I think she's going to come out pretty well from that. I know mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of new warriors after the Pro Tour, but uh, I Welcome. I always thought Rangers were pretty we're struggling against azalea and uh or i'm sorry dromai and azalea a lot of people were saying she was going to be s tier and then as soon as brody spurlock played dromai they're like oh everybody's got to play dromai now mm -hmm. uh so we'll, we'll see if they if he goes back and if uh the rest of us follow um because i i think she's still she's still great yeah yeah I, the, the one like i said i'm not sad about a world with no dromai in it but I am sad because I can tell you there's so many people that got into this game because they saw Jeremiah and they're like, oh, I could just make a whole ton of bunch of dragons. That's really cool. So I, I think that we're losing something in the community in terms of a, you know, a magnet to attract new players. Uh, however, I, for one, will be very happy she's gone. And if I never have to play against another one, great. <laughs> I'm glad I sold all my Marvel dragons when I did. Yes. Yeah. Good. I don't think I don't think Tomo Tai is going to get back up to three hundred fifty dollars anytime soon. No, no. Damn. No. I did not know it was that high. No, no uh, that was like that was like week two or three yeah. of the set. I think okay. it was that was like very very release pricing. Yeah. So I have I have two more things I want to talk about for the Pro Tour. First of mm -hmm. all, um, did you guys have like a special like? Did you have a Super Bowl watch party? You know, did you did you sit down with like wings and chips or anything, or was it just sort of on in the background? It, if if by that you mean playing last uh, last epoch all weekend while having it on my second screen, then yes, yeah, it was definitely a party. Yeah. So okay. yeah. So so we had it going during the the arcane circuit, arcane rising circuit, which was kind of cool because as we're all there sitting there just drafting some WTR, we're we're watching it there. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I just, I kind of had it on the background uh, at home uh, and was checking in and out of it. I mean, the, the finals was probably the best game of Flesh and Blood I've ever watched. Like, like I there was... There were so many good games that, like, yeah. on stream that weekend. Yeah. It, it, it was really, really well done. I mean, I, I, I'm i really excited about it. I, you know, whether it was the draft or the CC games, everything was really, really good. I mean, it was probably my favorite one to watch. And, and generally, I'm not one to sit there and, like, be glued to my tv all weekend watching it uh but this one was you know every one that i caught was just well done very very well done yeah that's that's yeah. A, a huge you know man sant and everybody doing mm -hmm. like amazing things for casting and all that because i think everybody knows scg ain't gonna do it no um so having those you know community people you know paying their own money and flying across the country with you know trap cases full of recording and broadcasting gear is just doing it you know for the sake of the game has been like just the biggest boon to the game i think that we've had so far and that's like again just like big you know props to them and everybody involved with that because it was very well done this time around i have a difficult time being able to watch these events live but when i do i am glued to the screen yeah. and i i think that that's something that a lot of players at a more casual level 
are able to engage with just as much as uh, pro players. Like, I think it's pretty clear when you see the lines and you see what they're doing. We might sit back and go like, no, don't do that. But when you hit that sigil and you're just like, like you you get that moment of just like it paid off. And, and yeah. I wonder if that's sort of um, an area where skill, um, where flesh and blood enjoyment can transcend uh, a player's skill is the viewing of it, the narratives that are being told. And I think a big part of that comes down to casting. I'm so happy that uh, Uber is in our community. I was a big Overwatch League fan. So um, we had great casting. That Just the narratives, the stories being told were so engaging. And I think that that's something that um, hopefully uh, people who are maybe more of the O3 drop tier of player feel that they are just as um, welcome in and are able to access it as much as the, you know, all the players who just were squeezed out of top eight. I think I think some of the most entertaining games I played were were literally the O3 table at Callings. Um, when we were in in Baltimore, I think it was. Yeah, when we were in Baltimore. Um, actually ended up uh, uh, playing one of our locals at like the O3 table at the calling. Um, yeah, it's 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 fun to still feel like a part of things, even though, you know, we're like we said, we you know, I think we me mentioned this before. None of us really have like the illusion that we're going to be like professional players. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, it's mm -hmm. it's more. It's just fun. It's mm -hmm. just plain fun. And I think that um, there was a really cool moment where we got to see that not everything that the pros say is something that you should take as dogma. And I think that was uh, the Bolton versus Viserai match. And seeing Viserai, it wasn't the same player, but seeing Viserai hang around top 20 throughout the, the yeah. weekend was super exciting to me. Because... I think a lot of times we say like, hey, if you know your hero, if you know your matchups, if you know the game, you play it well, like any hero can come and, and you know, take the W. And it doesn't always feel like that. Yeah. It, it, it certainly didn't when I saw that there were, you know, like 56% of the field was KO. You know, that was disappointing. Um, but then seeing that one viscerai squeeze in there, I was just like, God, I wanna I wanna see that player. I want to see those matches. Um so shout out to the the viscerai that was on stream and the Bolton bringing the off meta decks. Uh Bolton maybe less so, but but I love to see yeah. that uh heroes that people uh count out. Are, are showing up and doing well. And, and that's the so, exciting part is people are sitting there going like, well, you know, oh my God, what's going on with Viscera? What changed? What made him good? And people are like, well, he's always just been good. Like, like and especially with like people playing less warmongers and things like that, he just kind of comes to the top. And, and, it, it, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, I like about Flesh and Blood and I like about the people that, you know, don't necessarily say, hey, you know, the Brody Spurlock of the world is playing Dromai or playing whatever I have to do it too, is if you really sit there and just focus on your hero and somebody that you love, you know, when the day comes that the meta shifts to your favor, you are so well positioned in this game to just explode. I mean, people were, you know, knocking on Bolton forever. And then all of a sudden, Bolton comes out of nowhere. And now everybody sees it and goes, okay, I need to have a plan. Like, like, how do I beat this Bolton? Like, how do I deal with it? You know, it, it could happen at any moment. I think that's kind of the one of the most exciting things especially being in the lower tables is you get a chance to play against some of these off heroes that you normally don't see. Yeah, I feel like know, anyone who complains, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, feel, I feel like anyone who complains about an oversaturated meta has like very bad memory for Starbo. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't remember if you were playing uh, oh. during the Starbo era, Craig, but like, yeah, you know, I entered, about, like... I entered uh, during outsiders. So I missed it. Okay. But I was okay. there to hold him. Um, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to play LL as long as I know that Starvo didn't do as well as people expected, but like uh, I I'm still hesitant because of Starvo. Yeah, yeah. It, has left, it has left such a shadow that like even when they're like, no, he's not even that good anymore. I'm like, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. Nope. 
I will never touch LL unless physically being forced to. Like, yeah. does not sound fun to me. Um, well, uh, you know, we we've gone on for a while. I was I was hoping that you guys would indulge me for a minute. Sure. Um, as uh, I take this podcast to our little uh, Chateau de Poopy, <laughs> I have uh, I've curated uh, I've curated some fine vintages here for our uh, players of um what what year is that napkin in your cup there is that a good year uh, oh i'm sorry did you think those were napkins those are where's my camera dragon <laughs> shield matte uh, double sleeves beautiful beautiful we are going to uh a fine do a little something for our players who uh want to want to really show up at pre-release i've got uh three sleeves with me uh one for each hero uh, we'll start with the simplest one because I think this one is really understated. I think it speaks for itself and it's sort of a, a sky blue, right? And it, it's nice for Enigma. It, you know, really, it's nice for any of them because very nice with the Mysteria background. I personally, uh, I haven't found a good sleeve yet for new. I might make custom like tattoo art ones. I think that would be very cool. But I'm going to go with a nice sky blue get that out of here that's orange that's gross you are muted my friend how dare you call me out like that these are <laughs> supposed to be fury i think that's the lighting in my room that's making them look very orange but the 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 dragon shield fury that red probably for for new self-branded sleeves are nothing my friend self-branded sleeves are nothing that, Ooh, wait you mean well, like well, those maybe... camp green tree sleeves oh wait you mean like these camp oh, get, got bad glare. Camp Green Tree sleeves. You, you 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 gave me a segment on the show called Poopy's Minute. Sorry, you should have a minute to yourself. Sorry, Poopy. Which... We'll we'll we'll, All right. we'll give you thirty seconds back oh. in your time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can uh, I can uh, sway you on this one. Uh, for for a gentleman ninja player, I went with a with a real uh, tiger mm. uh, 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 theme. I think that. Uh, you know, I, I, I speculate that Crouching Tigers might make a return in this set. And I think uh, a really good way to show your support uh, for the ninja class is to go all in on that motif. Now, I noticed that there's also sort of a lunar, uh, astral, cosmic thing to uh, the illusionist. So I, I decided to go with uh, a, a, a little brushed art sleeve here of uh, it's... Drax, Draz Morks, and he's kind of like a sea god. He's like the god of the tides, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that it has stars on it and it's blue. So I think that all the choice. Mm, that's a fine illusionist sleeve right there. However, uh, if you saw the character art sleeves, just go with those. They look so good. Um, or or get some Smithel sleeves or some Smash with Green Tree or maybe O3 drop sleeves coming soon. Soon. All right. Anyway. Um, hey, before okay. before we wrap up, can I just uh, uh, ask the question that we want to ask the audience here? Um, sure. Because yeah, what is your you know... age, sex, and location? <laughs> ASL. No. Uh, no. Um, for so you know we 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 talked. Uh, a good bit about the new heroes and stuff. I think we're all just a little excited because of the new set coming out. And, you know, there is a lot of hype for that. Uh, we do want to make this something that does focus a little bit more on, on the social aspects of the game. And, you know, like I said, uh, offbeat meta legends of your armory. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to ask people to uh, submit whatever we want you know maybe we'll do questions one day maybe we will ask people to submit some stories of just off the wall shit that they've ran into at big tournaments or armories uh weird interactions maybe some fab am i the asshole questions um whatever we want to do um we're going to probably have a google form um open it up for uh the o3 dropcast at gmail.com o dot o dot three dot drop i don't know if the dots actually matter just from an email perspective we'll see um but yeah i think moving forward we're definitely going to have some 
segments that are going to involve uh, not only our community, but we want to hear about your communities too. Um, definitely intend to have some guests. Um, everybody knows the YouTube legend Sin on stream. Um, probably going to have him, some of our locals that do fun craft things, um, maybe even John, if he you know wants to. We'll see. But uh, we're going to have more of that, uh, more details on that coming soon. Um, and with that, you know, Craig, if you want to go over uh, the socials where you can find us, where we will be asking people to submit some of those things, and where we're just going to just shit post all day long. Well, I am sort of shit posting nonstop. If you see a post from me, assume it's a shit post. Um, I will say that uh, my my interaction uh, that the, something we're looking for, like for example, I'm thinking of getting a like printing a little shrimpy arm token for when I dishonor <laughs> KOs, so that I can put in their empty weapon slot a little tiny little baby arm. Um, <laughs> because if you aren't aware, uh, when KO loses their hero text and their hero ability, they no longer have one weapon zone; they have two. Um, so you got to give them the arm back. Um, but as far as, uh, socials go, I actually just made my Twitter today. So I'm not like a hundred percent sure. I know the socials, uh, let's Chris, can you, can you keep yeah. this one up? Yeah, I got it. So here, we'll, we'll start with the podcast <laughs> again. This is a uh, relatively, I tried. <laughs> you, you know, what, Poop, you did a fabulous job, you, you know, uh, other than yeah, talking job, about this, job. this Twitter site, because I don't know what that is. I, I only know X personally. But... Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Stab me in the back with that one that we literally <laughs> talked about before we started recording. Thanks. No, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the, the, the Twitter for the show, uh, again, we're going to probably, you know, uh, start following some folks, posting there pretty regularly. We're getting some last minute things ironed out uh, with the logo, things like that. So, expect to see it coming. Uh, we'll, you know, if you see it pop up in your, uh, your uh, Twitter feed or anything like that, that's us. Uh, it is at O underscore three underscore dropcast. So O3 Dropcast uh, at Twitter. Um, if you want to follow me personally, I'm also on Twitter at Smithle Gaming. Uh, Bryce, where are you at? Uh, it is, uh, you know what? I'm not going to lie. I don't remember where the underscore is. It's a, it's Bryce, Bryce. Games PGH. Uh, Bryce underscore Games PGH. Um, maybe I'll tell you the joke about the toaster over there. <laughs> okay, Craig, yourself. You, uh, what, what's your new Twitter? On... What did I name my Twitter? Uh, well, I'm not falling for that trap. Uh, I, I, it's X, as everyone knows. <laughs> but uh, it's Poopy03D. Um, you can find me over there at that. Uh, you can also find me on Twitch at, uh, I think it's Poop King Fab. So check me out over there. Uh, I've been streaming Prism recently. And uh, last night, I think I drew seven cards in one turn. Gross, very gross. But nice. awesome. Well, I mean, I, I I think that's that's all we got. Uh, so again, Craig, Bryce, thanks for joining us. Craig, thanks for kind of leading us uh, and keeping us on track here today. But other than that, like I said, we're gonna try to release relatively regularly, everybody. Uh, you know, so next week, uh, we'll probably be coming in with something else. And again, uh, keep an eye out for us in the future. Other than that, peace for me. Punchy tagline.